Welcome everybody. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. I know this is the last talk and can be a bit, uh, yeah, everyone is tired, everyone wants to go home, so I hope you enjoy it today. So uh, today, to, uh, sorry, today's our talk is uh, manage your application at scale with Nomad. We'll explain you first uh, uh, who we are, me and my colleague. Also like, uh, a little bit of a story, how we did we end up with this uh, tool? Actually, uh, raise your hand, please, if you know what is Nomad or have you read about it? Everyone? So, like, four? Yeah, that's okay. Cool. Yeah, and also we'll explain then, we'll need to explain a bit more, like, what is Nomad? Why uh, we chose it or what we consider it, even? And uh, a little bit of the architecture that we had the implementation that we have in, in Border Guru, and also some of our conclusions, and hopefully if everything is fine and the demo gods uh, uh, give us our blessing, everything will be fine. So hopefully everything works. So first of all, well, my name is Gerardo Gomez. I work at Border Guru as developer and DevOps. I'm originally from Mexico. And well, I've been here like for two years. And well, if some of you might know or might not know, uh, I'm also a metalhead from the T-shirt. Hi, my name is Vishwanath Bhatt. I'm a colleague of Herardos. I work a DevOps engineer at Border Guru. My full name is MS Vishwanath Bhatt, so I generally introduce as MS. It's easy to remember, hard to mispronounce. So, and I've been in Hamburg for about eight months now. So. Uh, so far, so good here. I like it here. <laughs> Great. Now, a little bit uh, also about Border Guru. Uh, Border Guru, we can think about it as logistics as a service. Let's put it in a depth jargon. Um, but mainly also, like, we do logistics for e-commerce. Uh, basically, we solve uh, the duties, taxes, importing, exporting, these problems for the e-commerce. Basically, also, our mission is... Uh, we want to solve the, we want to bring the same experience as domestic deliveries for cross-border deliveries, especially for international uh, markets. Now, once upon a time, we used to use a service called Docker Cloud. Basically, this service, well, it was providing us with container orchestration. It was even instantiating some uh, instances in AWS. This was done through some configuration that you have in the UI. Technically, the service was not really bad. Actually, it was okay-ish. From time to time, we used to have some issues with DNS. Sometimes the, our production servers were not really reachable, or containers dying just randomly, and well, support was not telling us really what's going on. But mainly the thing, the, the, the main thing that makes us move from Docker Cloud to some other service well was that they were shutting down the service in May 21st. So we got that notice like more or less like two months before. So uh, around March, more or less at the, at the end of March. And while well, we started like researching like what solutions we could implement instead of this. And well, some of those well, because we were using already AWS for our services, S3, uh, AWS instances, and uh, the other services as well. We thought first of ECS, because, well, it's containers and it's managed by, by AWS. Although well, it was not really fitting our, our requirements. Also checked a little bit of managed Kubernetes. That also could have well, helped us, but unfortunately, most of the services for us, we don't have really like millions of uh, microservices or so much uh, requirements regarding that. So it wasn't really a solution. Most of the time, it was really expensive, those services. And sometimes all of those, some of those even were not even replying us, like when we're requiring some, uh, some uh, invoices or like to see how much it will cost for us. And well, also we stumbled with Nomad, actually. And now MS will explain you what it's about. Thank you. So what is Nomad? Nomad, there are different names for what Nomad does. Container orchestrator, container scheduler, 
or cluster scheduler so nomad website itself describes it as like this flexible container orchestration system with, with with which you can run legacy or container replication but at its core in or in simple terms nomad is a tool for managing a cluster of machines and running applications on them it abstracts away the machines and the location of your application and lets you lets the user describe the application in a declarative job file and no it's no man's responsibility to make sure the job, job is running or all the container instances are running so a user specifies desired desired state of state of an application and nomad make sure the actual state matches the desired state so wh why nomad there are similar tools already out there very famous one famous enough but why did we choose nomad so for us one of the important things was simplicity nomad is a single binary you either run them in the client or server mode and you just create a cluster and then run application on on top of them you don't really need half a dozen different components to glue together to form a basic cluster it's really simple and nomad nomad is modeled after workload workflows instead of workloads what it means is it doesn't matter you are whether our application runs in container or it runs in java or it requires vm or anything there is a single workflow you can you, you can model your entire workflow in a simple way and multiple data centers is a first class concept in nomad if you want to at some point i mean you just run your entire cluster in one data center and at some point when you want to scale out to different region nomad has a first class answer for that you just run you just create multiple cluster and then you bind them together with a single command it's as simple as that and nomad scales really well nomad hashicorp the company behind nomad has a interesting project called c1m wherein they created a million containers that's like they created 1000 jobs each with 1000 uh, tasks and in total about 1000 containers and nomad was able to schedule them under 5 minutes and 99% of the containers were running under 6 minutes so that's a, that's a good, really good uh, interesting thing about nomad it, it scales really well we don't really have million containers but it's good to have a tool that really supports it and nomad is flexible it doesn't matter how your application is you can nomad has a concept of drivers with which you can run different types of workload you can use docker or rocket or kemu for running virtual virtualized machines or simple isolated fork exec binary or a raw, raw binary nomad has drivers for many of that so you can you, you can run different types of applications you don't really need to containerize your application in order to run them in nomad so it's flexible and also nomad runs on os x it runs on windows it runs on linux and in some cases it also supports um, um, raspberry pi so you can actually have you can actually run iot workloads in nomad and the support for gpu is also coming soon i believe so and it also runs on multiple clouds so with the, with nomad you're truly uh, not vendor locked in you can run in multiple clouds you can run in your own data center and and a, a hybrid cloud nomad lets you do that so it it's also flexible okay now a little bit about the architecture also like how this nomad works basically we have a set of servers um, this is representing actually like the whole um, region uh, nomad splits between regions data centers and you can scale these ones as much as you like you can have as many um, and basically the servers are the one that take all of the requests if you want to run as mentioned by ms a job you need to specify it in a nomad file this file you send it via the cli or also like an api call and you send this to the servers all of them 
can actually or execute the decision on where it's going to be running. This is because all of them can receive the, the, the job. There's the followers and the leaders, and well, it's only one leader, sorry. The leader is the one that actually do the decision of where, where are we going to run our task. But we have the followers just in case one of those nodes die, or well, in case of the leader dies. So everyone is aware where it's going to be executed the task. This is done forming a consensus. This is actually the protocol that we use for uh, in that Nomad uses to uh, come to the decision. And finally, the task is uh, executed in the client. This could be in the form already mentioned, containers, uh, static binaries. And, uh, and we send that information via an RPC protocol. And the clients, we can have as many as we want. We could have as uh, all in the one million container uh, project, we can have, I don't know, 5,000 uh, servers running for clients. But for the servers, it's like a good rule of thumb to have between uh, three or five servers. This is just to uh, achieve like a performance and high availability ratio. If you have more, much more than those uh, five servers, you might have uh, some issues with the with the networking, or well, the consensus will not be so stable. And actually, well, this uh, the container challenge was actually done with only five servers, so most probably you don't will not need that much. So I think it's more than enough having more than uh, having as much as five. So uh, actually, with Nomad, it's not just enough. Like you actually need to implement some other things. Like Nomad is really just the application and scheduling. So this means well, running our tasks. We need some other things like service discovery because sometimes we don't know actually where our applications are running. This can change. Like Nomad takes care of uh, executing our tasks, like giving our clients. So sometimes it could end up in a completely different client, or actually we don't really care about that. That's uh, the, the task of Nomad. So we need to complement with some other tools. Most of these tools actually they are plug pluggable, let's say. Yeah, you don't really need to use exactly these ones. But they have better integrations because uh, most of them are from the uh, ecosystem of HashiCorp. For instance, console, we use it for the service discovery. And also we'll explain you a uh, load balancer that we need to redirect the traffic that we have into our containers. Well, console, um, as I mentioned, is uh, the, our service discovery tool. This helps us for servers registry, discovering the services, and health checks as well. So whenever we register a new service, it will end up here. It will, this is an in-memory database, more or less, a yeah, key value pair. And um, we know exactly where is running our container, what kind of services. And well, it will help us later to actually uh, dynamically uh, route traffic to there. Also, we need to know when it's actually like uh, one of our servers, if it's uh, healthy or not. So that's why we need the health checks. Console makes sure that our services are available, because if not, we're actually going to route traffic to something that is just failing. So. We need to have this coordination as well. Now, Fabio, well, first of all, if you Google Fabio just like that, you will end up with a lot of these pictures because it's like an Italian role model or something like that. So first, really make sure that uh, your Google search is more like this, Fabio LB, it's Fabio Load Balancer. And there actually, well, Fabio is a, a console aware load balancer in which he uses console, the service, to know where to redirect our service. And uh, we not only use it for incoming uh, requests, but also we use it internally to communicate between our services. This is, was more or less kind of a hack, because actually um, th there's a problem in which if you uh, have containers and you need to assign dynamic ports to to the containers, well, you can exhaust the resources because then you will start. You will be using a port that is already using by a, um, by the same container. So it's us for us to solve that problem and be able to have uh, the same num the, the same container in the same machine. We assign the dynamic ports, and then we use 
Fabio to uh, redirect traffic to to that content to those containers. Yeah. Okay, so this is our more or less simplified architecture. We run everything in a sing this is a single region architecture, and we run everything in one VPC and in uh, only in private subnets because you don't really need to run in public subnets these instances. So broadly speaking, you can categorize the whole cluster into control plane, which is the upper part, and worker plane, that's the below part. Control plane is nomad servers, and it's really uh, recommended that you run odd number of servers because servers are a state store themselves. They don't really need something else. And uh, they, f they form a consensus among themselves. So it, it needs quorum to operate properly. So with, with three servers, you are protected from a failure of one server. And it's th the only requirement between the network latency requirement is in sub 10 milliseconds. And it's recommended that you run them in different AWS availability zones because the latency between uh, AWS AZs is in, in within the same requirement that Nomad, requ Nomad needs. And also, uh, AWS promises fault isolation between the AZs, which means if, uh, if one AZ goes down for some reason or is running with a degraded performance, we can still operate, the servers can still operate. And in server, in the control plane, we co-locate both Nomad and console. This is not, it, this is strictly optional. If you have a different uh, uh, use case for console, you can run them in a separate cluster and then let uh, Nomad discover console. And the worker plane. You don't really have any restrictions on how many workers that you can run. Uh, in fact, the C1M, the content, 1 million container challenge, that was run with five servers and 5,000 cl clients. And it's also recommended that you run your clients in the different availability zones, again, because of high HA reasons. And, but in client, it's recommended that you co-locate Nomad, Console, and Fabio. It's because Nomad has tight integration with console and Fabio needs to discover console to discover the services. And then we, we, it's better that you run everything inside ASG so that if for any reason, if a node crashes, EC2 instance goes down, ASG brings it back up. And also in, in clients, you can even have uh, auto scaling based on the CPU or some kind of metrics. So Nomad is easy to kind of prepare a simple mental model. So here you have servers and clients and user submits jobs to the one of the servers. And these servers decide, they, they do scheduling, it's called evaluation in Nomad and then they create allocation plan. And they tell the Nomad clients to run that particular container or binary or something. So the client starts the application and it, it registers to console, again, running in the local uh, local host, that this service is, this particular service is running in this IP and in this port. Console propagates that to console, ser console servers and other clients discover from the console servers. And Fabio, it, it watches console console service catalog and then it knows when, when there is a change in, in the service catalog and it rebuilds its routing table. And then we have here application load balancer. This is kind of our in ingress load balancer ex from external world. If someone, uh, when a client sends a request that first ends up in ALB, that, that's where we terminate our SSL as well. And from there, it sends, it, re it routes the traffic to Fabio. And Fabio looks up into its routing table decides which which container or which uh, IP port, which address this particular request should be forwarded to and it sends to that particular container instance or address. It's, it's really simple to build kind of mental models and easy to debug. Okay, so what the conclusion of, what did we learn 
in last about six months. First of all, it really helped us uh, with the migration. It was easy. It was it it actually went so smooth. I mean, we, we uh, it's smoother than we initially thought. But then, this is all because of the simplicity. And this also has a simpler learning curve because it's not really that. It's as I already mentioned. It's uh, simpler to build mental model. And if you're going to production, we recommend uh, that you use some kind of infrastructure as code. We we use Packer with Ansible to provision the AMIs, and then we use Terraform to deploy them. And we also use Terraform to create other resources that's required here, ALBs, and such things like that. And other thing that we learned is monitoring and observability. It should never be an afterthought, because you need as much insight into your cluster and both console, Nomad, and even Fabio support some kind of telemetry. It, they all emit the required metrics, and then th all of them use StatsD or Prometheus to uh, emit the metrics. So it's highly recommended th that you use some kind of monitoring and observability. And if you're going to production, <laughs> It's it's important that you have proper security. Both Nomad and Console they they, they support ACL for access controls, and they also use uh, they also support SSL for uh, trans uh, encryption at, in transit. So it's important that you your cluster is secure. So we recommend that you use some kind of the security that's provided by these tools. And the important thing is that you know the resource consumption model of your application. When when the request increases or when you get a load, it's important if the memory increase or does it do a lot of I.O., network I.O., or the CPU increase, it's important to know that and specify that in the job file. Because these informations will be used by Nomad to make scheduling decisions. And in some cases, like in memory, it also puts some limit so that if a one rogue application wants to use entire memory, it doesn't affect the other other applications that's running on the same instance. It's important to know that and specify that in the job file. And as Harold already mentioned, dynamic ports can be a bit tricky. So the workaround that we used, I mean, this was initially a small hiccup with our uh, uh, cluster and the way we solve it that is we use DNS mask and every every container when it uh, when it requests a DNS with some some particular pattern that is rerouted to Fabio and Fabio looks up in the looks up its uh, routing table and forwards it to right container or right address and then I want to say everything is a trade-off it's Nomad is just a scheduler, and it's a really good one at that. But it doesn't solve all the problems, and it's not suited to everybody. But what I would say is, if, if you are looking for some kind of container orchestration solution, first identify the problems that you have, or you first identify the pain points, and look up all, uh, and then research what tools can solve that, that pain points, and then choose the one that really suits you, and don't really go by the hype. Because complex systems can in fail in complex ways and difficult to debug, and if you don't require some of the features that's you know offered by, you might be trying to solve a problem that you don't really have. So with if you choose a simple solution, it's simpler to debug, simpler to maintain, and then easy to reason about. In my mind, small to small to mid-sized teams with uh, with really limited operations team can really benefit from this nomad. Okay, demo times. Let's Hopefully see. it works. <laughs> so first some terminal magic. Okay. Ooh, so weak now. So first of all, uh, Nomad already comes with a UI as well, out of the box. 
when you install it has a server. This is, uh, we have it also running behind a AWS ALB. So whenever we go to this uh, port, um, it displays the UI, it's an HTTP server. And actually, well, as we mentioned already, we use Terraform for building our environments. And well, we build a small uh, but similar environment as we have in production. So this pretty much was copy pasting the, the infrastructure that we have there. What we are now going to show you is uh, how do we do this actually? How do we run some applications? Okay, maybe I can move here. Yeah. So basically, with Nomad, uh, as we already mentioned, you specify your jobs in a Nomad file. Um, you have several configurations. You can configure. How do you update? Um, how do you update your application? This could be in different uh, deployment strategies, like green, uh, blue-green deployments, canary deployment. You can have defined your parameters. In this case, it's a really simplified version. It's a really simple application. Also, you can define how actually it's going to fail. Uh, one of the nicest features, features that it has is that if um, you have a you have a new deployment. And you specify that you want to auto-revert it here in the update. It will revert back to the uh, previous known healthy version. So in theory, you will not have really downtimes. Um, and this is done by, by a nomad scheduling. You can also specify the, uh, the some constraints, like where do you want to run your tasks. Um, in general, it's not like a good practice, let's say to run in really specific servers certain things. In theory, you just have your pool of servers, and then you can run pretty much everything anywhere in those servers. But sometimes you have certain constraints. Let's say that you want to, you're actually deploying a container. So well, it makes sense that uh, the constraint is that everything that is running Docker is going to be run in Docker uh, servers. But also, if you're running a uh, Java application, well, probably or most probably, you will need to deploy only where the Java is actually installed. And so on and so forth, actually, you can, there are really several configurations that you can customize. And then we have the actual task, like actually what we are executing uh, in the clients. So as you can see here, we specify what do we want to run. It's just the Docker driver. Then you have some configuration from Docker, the image, that we want to run this is just a hello world pretty much just whenever you ping the service it will give you back a text uh, a text response and we port also the map just to have it available so console also is aware of it and well we also assign some resources as we mentioned i will just quickly go through because this pretty much uh, will, uh, i will encourage you to check it in the documentation it will be uh, less boring the talk if we go do it like this and well, actually this is important because actually this is the, the configuration that helps us to connect with console and Fabio. This service configuration tells what's the name of our service that we have and some tags uh, in console. Specifically this one, uh, this uh, URL prefix, we use it to route traffic to this domain in particular, codetalks.bordeguru.de. And then Fabio will know where it actually needs to be run. Now, last but not least, also the check. Uh, how are we going to be sure that our service is up and running? And this is just basically pinging the service with a pretty much like a curl or like, it's more like a post get request. So now, first of all, increase the size. Mm -hmm. Can you see, or more or less? No, increase it. No, full. Um, maybe a little bit. Ah, it's okay. Um, so as we mentioned before, um, what we have in Nomad is just like a simple workflow. Just like in Terraform, if you already have some experience with it, you have to run first a plan, and then you apply your changes. So first, we plan what we're going to run. In this case, we have nothing running. So we'll start from scratch to deploy our service. 
and also Nomad uses these indexes, so we know that whatever that we're going to run is actually what we're going to run, because it could be that uh, some other colleague is actually, uh, sorry? So we're actually, uh, we might need to run with parallel or like uh, some other colleague is running something else, so if we plan and then execute it immediately or without planning, uh, it might be that we end up with something completely different from what we got. So now we can run actually our job. It will get deployed, and it will appear actually here in um, in the UI. Need to refresh only. It's not so responsive. So the service is here. We can actually ping against it. It's just basically a while loop that is just pinging there. We'll just leave it there for a while to see that everything is fine. The container is running. It responds to the URL, codetalks.burgeroot.de. And then we'll just try to execute a change with it. So let's say instead of hello world, we want just to say hello code talks. We'll go again to the same workflow that we have. We're going to plan our changes. I will put it just on the top. Plan our changes. And actually, we'll see here that on the top that what was our change right now. Instead of hello world, we're going to output code talks. Now we're we'll actually be able to run it as well. And then soon we will see while we're doing the deployment. Well, it's until here, so maybe at some point it will appear. Well, I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> Not really? Yeah, we have got talks okay. already. So it's deploying one by one the containers. This is the deployment strategy that we have. And at some point, because it has pretty much two versions, at some point the deployment will finish, and it will show only code talks. And because console is also making sure that the deployment is going fine, that's why it takes some time as well. Like you can configure those parameters as well for the deployment and it could be immediately as well if we wanted to but we need to make sure that it's fine so that's why they change so now it's just only that actually um, and well some something else that we wanted to show you this is kind of new so should be fine but let's try it um, to fake uh, failure deployment to see how it looks like ah sorry actually I want to show you first how our services look inside console so here first of all most of us the console Fabio nomad nomad client nomad server those are registered also in console because he's and making sure that everything is fine. And our service as well. Here is the spe specific tag for it. And then Fabio is actually the one that is going to be using it for routing. So it has this routing table. And then it's pretty much saying, OK, uh, where, whenever you get to this domain name, you will distribute it uh, evenly between these containers. This is the, IP, the private IPs within the VPN of uh, our servers, or more like our Nomad clients. These are the random ports, actually, that we mentioned, the dynamic port problem that we told you. And yeah, that's how it looked like in the UI. Going back to the, the file, now to modify it and generate this, this fake error, we can go again to our plan, be a bit faster. Yes. Here it shows that the image is changed. Image is from zero to one. Oh, sorry. Image for zero to one to image 
X dot X dot X. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, you cannot find the cursor. <laughs> Okay, let's leave it like that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Any and questions? Do you have any questions? Yeah. Yeah. D DCOS? Uh, no. Yes. Uh, yeah. well, I'm yes. Uh, <laughs> I have heard about it, but we never uh, actually used it, no. But the, I know that TCOS is also similar, uh, and then it supports multiple workloads, Marathon being for containers one of them. Uh, but we never actually, actually tried that. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We we never actually experimented with it to be honest. But yeah. we used we have uh, experimented with some uh, managed Kubernetes, CCS and but not DCOS. Yeah. Any more questions? Oh. Uh, yes. I mean, uh, if you are talking about application service discovery, then no. But uh, how do we uh, form the cluster is uh, we don't, the way we, you create a cluster is you, you first run one nomad, and then you run another nomad, and then join them together with a command. But nomad and console, both of them, have uh, this nice property wherein you say any instance with this particular tag, uh, tag, basically key value pair, just form a cluster of them. And you can specify a cloud metadata and then a nomad and console discover all the instances with that particular key value pair and then form a cluster on, on its own. In fact, we use that in our cluster. But not for service as in applications. Yes. Mm -hmm. Basically, software-defined networking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I personally, ha we haven't tried that ourselves, because it, for us, I mean, it's it's not really a biggest problem. I mean, we don't really need SDN to make life difficult. But I have read in documentation that it's supported from the community. Nomad itself doesn't hasn't really proper documentation for that. At least I haven't come across that, but you can if you want. And with uh, with the latest release of console, it also supports some kind of service mesh with console connect. But again, the the thing is, Nomad has this concept of task groups and task. Task groups is kind of a part in Kubernetes world. So you, you run multiple uh, tasks in the same uh, same physical host, but the problem is no, Nomad doesn't encapsulate them with a single network namespace, so they are in different namespace. One one container or one application cannot discover other with local host. Yeah. Also, well, another way that we tried a little bit to make it run is using DNS records as well, because pretty much the problem is not really the the host in itself, but it's more like the ports, but to discover or like whenever you go to this specific domain, go also to this port, we could use a different domain uh, DNS record for that. But well, we didn't finish implementing that one. Right now, we were kind of a bit pressured with it like at the first uh, migration. So also we kind of uh, work around the same the problem. So that's why we end up right now with that. But so far it's not working fine. It's kind of doing the same thing Fabio for us, so. No more questions? No more questions, I think. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.